Wow, thank you for the opportunity. As you were talking, I was thinking about having heard you say in the past, sometimes when you want something and it's not coming, that either you're not a match to it or you need to change your, just your thoughts about it, I guess. I'm trying to remember what the rest of that was. I'm a little nervous, sorry. Let us clarify that just a little bit because we don't want to give you the impression that you want something and source is saying, oh no, that's not good for you, so you can't have it. Because it isn't like that at all. But what we mean is, over time, you've put lots of components into this vibrational reality. In other words, there are so many pieces of things that are important to you that are there. And we called it a vortex. We wrote a book about it, wanting to help you feel it as the real thing that it is, even though your physical senses can't yet see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it, it still exists. So we're wanting you to follow along in this process of how thoughts do turn to things, how your desires do become manifested relationships and manifested material objects and manifested states of being. And so when someone's rude to you, you want them to be nicer. And when you don't have enough money, you want more money and so on. In other words, when you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. And you put all of these components over time and a lot of them even there before you came into this body, into this vortex. And it is a magnificent culmination of all that life has caused you to desire. And it is accurate to say what life has already caused you to become. But it's a really rare one of you who could define or describe with very much detail or accuracy what is in that vortex for these reasons. First of all, you put it there incrementally. So you were kind of single sided. In other words, you didn't like that person being rude to you, but you weren't thinking about the whole of humanity. And yet when you put it in there, the whole of humanity is considered. You see what we're getting at? And over all the times that you put things like that in it, you kept refining it until who you really are and what you really want is indescribable to you because not only because you put it in over a long period of time, but because it has been being tended to by your inner being. It has been growing because of law of attraction. So it's more than you would recognize by its individual pieces. It's some total is more than its individual parts in the sense that you might remember the individual parts, but you can't really realize what it's all come to. An example would be, Esther, when she was playing with Jerry and they realized that Abraham was flowing to them, made him promise not to tell anyone because she didn't want to ever do this. <laughs> she didn't want to be the weird one who hears voices. She did not want that. But so much about what she did want. She was born to be an uplifter. She cares about people understanding. She likes people knowing she's a process oriented person. She likes having a formula that works for her. And so little did Esther know what was in her vortex and what was becoming. It was through the path of least resistance that she discovered it and accepted it one piece at a time. So what we really want to say to you is that who you are and what you want is always much bigger than this specific thing that you think you want right here and now. You might think that you want this job, that your life depends on it because you're out of money and this job matters so much. When through all the jobs that you've been working, you've been asking to be in a considerate environment. You've been asking to be respected and you've been asking to make plenty of money and you've been asking for it to be an environment where you could grow. You've been asking for it to be something where you could be nurturing to others and others could be nurturing to you. You have been asking for it to be something that was open-ended where you could continue to expand. And so what we mean is that this job that isn't unfolding for you may not be all of this. It might be your last ditch effort not to lose your house, but it's not the job that you've been asking for with all that you've been putting into it. Mm -hmm. That's what we were getting at. So we really want to say, that if you've got negative emotion going on about something, if you feel reservations about something, it means 100% of the time that the way you're looking at it is not the way your inner being is looking at it. It doesn't necessarily mean this isn't the job for you. 
but it does mean your point of view right here and now does not jive with what your infinite intelligence is thinking about the same subject at the same moment that the emotion is present helpful yes and the thoughts that were on my mind when I was sitting there had to do with relationship and as I've been sitting here I've been thinking I've had a near miss and intimate relationship I have a relationship with my niece who lives in my home and then there's a relationship with people at work one in particular who's a my niece and the other can be rascals so I'm trying uh, in the case of the latter two where it's someone who lives in the house not an intimate relationship and work trying to consider positive aspects when sometimes I just want to shake them <laughs> I don't know what else I, I, my frustration level I'm trying to figure out how to back away or consider positive aspects of people I want to this is always true and this can be a guiding philosophy for you or a guidance tool for you let's say that you're bumping up against someone who you're working with who is really 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 not a vibrational match to you yeah <laughs> Okay, you got it. Really, 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 <laughs> really, really not a vibrational match. And you sort of want to stay and that other person looks like they're going to be there forever too. Yeah, you got it. And you can't figure out how it's going to work out because it's like being in the same space always causes you to feel the way you do. And you've tried everything. You've done focus wheels. You've made lists of positive aspects. You've tried to pretend that the vibrational differences aren't there. But the vibrational differences are there so one of two things will happen when you tune into who you are because when you tune into your inner being you dominate the environment your power of influence becomes such that those who are not up to speed with what you've got going on either must join you in up to speedness or they have to go somewhere else mm, thank you for the reminder yeah yeah but what happens is if they're really driving you out of your mind and other people too you don't get up to speed you talk about it mm -hmm. you hold yourself in the vibration you make yourself a perfect match to the trouble that they are <laughs> okay guilty as charged yeah and so one of the things that we really like saying to all of you we've been saying it a lot in the last two or three or four or five hundred seminars <laughs> There are two ways to know what you've got going on vibrationally. One is by how it feels and one is by how things are turning out. So in this understanding of how vibration is turning into reality, it just is. Thoughts do turn to things. So if you're hanging around up here feeling really, really good and you get an impulse to go work someplace, usually everything about that matches how you were feeling for a consistent amount of time before you received the impulses before the idea of that even began occurring to you in other words the way it unfolds felt good all along the way but let's say you've been having a miserable time that somebody's just been driving you crazy and you're trying to figure out what to do about it and you take action from that point of view that action will bite you hard yeah, yeah. so you really do want to get here before you act and just a question in the intimate side of relationships I've had a near miss and I feel like there's no question but source knows exactly the right match in that type of a relationship for me you might want to call it near and leave out the miss part okay <laughs> just for the sake of cleaning the energy up just a little bit and writing some statements in order to help you in this moment to harmonize with what you want you could say things like I'm having clarifying moments and I realize that I'm really on the path because look how wonderful this was in all of these ways and I don't need to be any kind of hurry I can give the universe all the time it needs to give me all the clues it needs to give me say again I can give the universe all the time it needs to take me on all the wild goose chases that my resistance allows <laughs> I can accept that that's a resistance spot with me so we can say that even better I can give the universe all the time it needs to take me down all the trails that 
I can allow myself to find it taking me to in order to get to where I want to be. And in the process, every time I follow a hunch or an impulse, because I'm in the receptive mode, every time I follow it, I get closer to, oh, hear this, not closer to the end result I think I want, but closer to having released the resistance that is in my way. Can you hear that? Closer to, with every experience you have. That's why you want to bless the rascals because they help you leave off the resistance pieces like peeling the layers on an onion little by little by little until suddenly, or not so suddenly, you stand resistance free and then you get an impulse that takes you right to what you're looking for. Did you hear that? It was so good. It was so good we want to say it again so that you can hear it more clearly. So you get the picture? Your inner being knows where you stand in relationship to everything you want. Very clearly knows. But your inner being is not considering the fastest, straightest route to get you from where you are to where you want to be because there are so many pleasurable twists and turns in the journey to help you to discover and be satisfied by so many other things that are in your vortex. You see what we're getting at? So if your intention is not to have your inner being lead you to the love of your life, but if your intention is to feel as happy as you can feel now and as good as you can feel now and as good as you can feel now, if you're willing to pay the awful price of happiness <laughs> with no ulterior motive other than you want to feel good and you want to be in the receptive mode, if your desire, if your dominant desire, if your one and only desire can be, I want to be in the receptive mode. I want to be in the receptive mode. I want to be in the receptive mode. I want to be in the receptive mode so that I can follow the trail and enjoy the trail. Enjoy the trail. Enjoy the trail. It's lovely that you've put resistance all over your trail. It's lovely. We love that the mountains in this part of the world are there because you have no straight shot roads to anything. <laughs> You have to wander through hills and valleys and up, up over and down under. You have to experience the incredible light show that your world is giving to you as you're down in the valley and up on the sunrise. You see what we're getting at? You don't want to go directly from where you are to anything. You want to go on this wonderful journey that little by little you're paving the roads. You're paving the roads so that it's not an unpleasant journey, it's not an arduous journey, it's not an impossible journey, it's not a frustrating journey, it's a beautiful journey, moving around beautiful places and beautiful things and beautiful conversations and beautiful insights all on the way to the happily ever after that matters right now and then the next one and then the next one and the next one. So you say inner being, never mind the scenic route, take me directly there. <laughs> And your inner being says, you're the one who put the mountain on the way. <laughs> we don't want to flatten out all the mountains. We'll just knowingly, with such wisdom and precision, guide you around all of the resistance. And along the way, you will release anything that is in your way. So you were just talking about going around the mountains, but you're really releasing the mountains as opposed to just they're going to continue or they're going to continue to exist and you're just going to figure out how to avoid them some might say that it's resistance or in this case a mountain that I'm hungry right now but we know that when you sit down to eat that hunger unless it's extreme will have been a benefit to you because it sharpens your appreciation of the food that you are eating without the contrast you couldn't even see anything Esther accuses us of blabbing everything and we are guilty. 